ridiculous up there. Okay. Tight quarters. Check one, two, check one, two. Okay. All right, so first of all, if you could just say and spell your first and last name. Sure. My name's Bobby, B O B B Y, Alton, O U T T E N. Gotcha. So tell me about just the atmosphere that what you guys are feeling right now. Uh, well, we're busy. Everybody's getting ready for the storm. Um, you know, this is something that comes fairly regularly here, so we've, we've got all of our department heads, everybody up, ready to go. We've been at it since Monday, getting making our preparations, and so uh, we've had all of our meetings, our control group meeting, our support group meetings, and so we're, we're ready to go. Um, we'll have a support group, I mean, a control group meeting at 5.30 today to talk about what other preparation we need to do, and we'll, we'll make whatever final decisions we have to make then uh, based on the 5 o'clock advisory. Gotcha. Okay, so what are some of those preparations that you guys are making? Well, we've got all of our staff up. We've moved all of our people around. We've got our EMS crews ready, our public works crews ready. The, you know, we've had our support group meeting when all of the supporting agencies came in this morning. We went around and every, all of those agencies are ready. So everybody's up and ready for the response for whatever comes. Um, now we're, you know, we've met with DOT. We know what's going on there. They know what's going on. So, you know, when and if this thing comes and if it has an impact, then we're ready to respond to that first thing on Friday. Uh, when it all gets out of here, and so now we're just sort of waiting, trying to make sure we cross all of our T's, get all of our checklists done, and, and that we're ready to go. Gotcha. What are, what are you guys expecting at this point based on what you've seen? Um, it looks like we're going to have up north of Oregon Inlet uh, wind 35 to 50 miles an hour, some probably some sound side flooding a little bit, and a lot of rain. So up here it'll be a uh, typical January or February kind of northeaster. Uh, south of Oregon Inlet, uh, the hurricane force winds are right now projected to hit off right on Hatteras, right at the point almost, um, at about 2 in the morning on Friday morning and then be out of here at 7 or 8 o'clock Friday morning. So we, we'll have some hurricane force winds there, 3 to 5 feet of storm surge, so there'll be some water over the roads in the places where the, we normally have water over the roads. Uh, and we'll have to deal with that uh, on Friday afternoon uh, when it gets out of here. Gotcha. Um, so it sounds like at this point, I mean, this is comparatively, I guess we were talking to Irene, this isn't, you know. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a different storm than Irene because one, it's, it's smaller, two, the winds aren't as high, three, it's not going to be here as long. It, it's, it'll be moving at 22 or 23 miles an hour or something, I think they said, as it comes through here. So it, it'll come and go quickly. Irene was on us for gosh, what, 12 or 14 hours or something. And so we wouldn't expect that kind of impact like we had with Irene. Gotcha. Uh, and this is a busy, busy time for Dare County, correct? Right? Uh, this is a busy time. We're probably full. We're probably at capacity right now. Um, so, you know, there's no good time for a hurricane. This certainly isn't one. So, uh, but we'll, we'll make it work and, and we'll make sure we take care of everybody. Do you think this is going to crush anybody's Fourth of July plans? Or uh, we hope not because the impacts up north are going to be minimal it'll be rainy and windy and all that sort of thing and down south uh down south of oregon inlet uh you know the the storm will be out of here on friday so it'll yeah, it'll change somebody's fourth plans but the weekend should be nice and should be pretty and uh, if the road holds and we'll be okay so you haven't heard a lot of people banking out on vacation early and uh we haven't heard that yet uh, you know we haven't had our last advisory that we'll get at five o'clock today yet either so uh, we'll, we'll get some information out then once we know more. Gotcha. And then once the storm actually comes, what goes on here? Are you using just constant monitoring? Uh, well, we have the support group up here, which are all the supporting agencies, and we uh, respond to whatever comes up. If the power lines are down, the roads closed, someone's sick, we have a fire, you name it. Whatever issue you have, and there are multiple, we have someone here that can respond to that. We have phone banks up and running that can take the phone calls. We can give information. We can have our website running. Our, Joint Information Center's up here with all the communications from all the towns and counties that run through here. Um, so we're here, we're connected with the state EOC, uh, you know, the Hurricane Center, all the things that we need, we're ready. This is where it all runs out of. Gotcha. Well, any other final advice for people who are not from this area vacationing? And I would tell them to just monitor the sites, uh, take a look at our website, darienc.com. We'll keep things up to date, monitor the the various channels, whatever news outlets they look to keep their eye on the weather as things progress and, and you know, some more information will come later today when we get the last of those advisories. Gotcha. So and overall just not expecting a big a big blowout. Um, we're expecting a hurricane. We're expecting hurricane force winds and we're expecting them to hit on Hatteras Island and so we'll get the impacts that that occurs, but we 
you know, we're not expecting an Irene, if that's what you're asking, uh, type hurricane. Perfect. Anything else yeah. you want to add? That's it. Thank you very you, much. You've uh, mentioned the advisories a couple of times. Is yep. that something that you're, you guys pretty much wait for those? Are they pretty important? Do you pay attention to them? Uh, we do follow the advisories very closely because that tells us what the track of the hurricane is going to be, and the track of the hurricane uh, helps us make the decisions on what we need to do, if we need to evacuate, and if we do need to evacuate, where do we need to evacuate, and also when do we need to evacuate. So that's what we're looking for. Um, if an advisory, if the advisory comes at 5 o'clock and those decisions need to be made, then we'll make them, and we have time tomorrow to do that if we need to. Perfect. Great. Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much.
Yep. Check one, two. So first of all, if I can get your first, <laughs> first and last name. Titty Bray. Okay. J-E-N-N-Y-B-R-A-Y. Awesome. So tell me about just today. Let me see what's going on. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Redo. Check, 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 check. There we are. Check one, two, check one, two. All right, one more time. So I can... Jenny Bray, J-E-N-N-Y-B-R-A-Y. Awesome. Tell me about how it's been. We woke up. It was a little rainy back home, but we drove up here, and it's, it's been nice ever since. Beautiful day. Any idea that a tropical storm would be coming your no, way by this weather? definitely planet? not. So what are your plans for the next couple of days? Probably be working, tying some stuff down so it doesn't blow around. Yeah. Are you guys kind of used to this? A little bit, yeah. What are you expecting to see around here? A lot of wind, a lot of rain probably tourist in the cottages. <laughs> yeah. Are you expecting a lot of people to be bailing or? I don't know. Um, I think most of the locals will probably stick around, weather it out, like usual. Yeah, so nothing, not worried about it at no, all? No, not really. Got you. Have you been through a, a tropical storm or hurricane in this area before? Um, this is the first one this year, so. Yeah, and it looks like it's staying pretty. Yeah, it's um, nice right now, so. Got you. Have you seen a ton of people around? What's like the beach has been like? A lot of people, yeah right now they they probably not used to this happening so it's gonna come all at once they're gonna be in the house on july 4th so <laughs> bummer yeah are you kind of worried about you know maybe some fireworks shows or anything i don't think there's gonna be any fireworks shows this year so kind of a bummer or are you just a little kinda... bit of a bummer but we'll, we'll both be working anyway uh, so we're used to this well, anything else you want to add no nope. awesome yeah. that's what we needed cool deal right there thank you no i don't know if i can do it all right perfect <laughs> We're probably only going to use like 20, 10 seconds of that. Yeah, anyway. okay. okay. You know how it works. So right. Check one, two. So your first and last name? Claire Samangini, K-L-O-R-I-S-S-A-M-A-N-G-I-N-I.
Mic on? One, two, three, two. Well, good evening. We're here in Dare County, just off of Bonner Bridge. I'll tell you about the looks and feel of it now. You would have no idea that Tropical Storm Arthur is making its way to our coast. It is beautiful. It is sunny. Great day to be at the beach. But they always say you can never be too prepared, right? So the DOT is taking extra steps to make sure that they are gassed up and geared up and ready to go. They have laid out all of their equipment along the P Bridge here. Bonner Bridge. Yeah, Bonner Bridge. That's fine. That part will be covered by video. Huh? No. We're... Well, good evening. We're here in Dare County, just off the Bonner Bridge. I'll tell you about the looks. It's on, huh? it's on this side. Good evening, we're here in Dare County, just off the Bonner Bridge. I'll tell you about the looks and feel of it now. You would have no idea that Tropical Storm Arthur is making its way to our coast. It's hot, it is gorgeous out here, great day to be on the beach, but they say you can never be too prepared, right? So the DOT has lined up all of their emergency construction equipment. They have their front loaders, their tractors all ready to go. If you drive some of these roads and the Outer Banks, you'll see a lot of them are surrounded by sand, and when the wind and the rain come, it can push a lot of that sand in. Oh, I thought you stopped. No. <laughs> Three, two. Well, good evening. We're here in Dare County, just off the Bonner Bridge. I'll tell you about the looks and feel of it right now. You would have no idea that Tropical Storm Arthur is making his way to our North Carolina coast. But they say you can never be too prepared, right? So the DOT has lined up all of its construction equipment. They have front loaders, bulldozers, everything they would need to clear the roads if things do get dicey. If you drive through some of these roads in the Outer Banks, you'll see a lot of them are surrounded by dunes. And when the wind and the rain comes in, it can make a lot of those roads. Let me redo that line. A lot of these streets here in the Outer Banks are surrounded by dunes, and when the wind and rain comes in, it can make some of them impassable, so they want to make sure they have everything they would need to clear the streets. Now, if you're over in Ocracoke Island, there is a voluntary evacuation going on. They're going to be running the ferries 24-7 if you want to leave, but for now, it sounds like everyone is just playing it by ear. They're enjoying the beautiful day, tons of people flocking to the beach, and hoping Arthur just stays further east. Okay. Now just to give you an idea of how many people are out here, the average population for Dare County is about 30,000. Well, right now, officials say it's about at 300,000. So definitely one of the busiest times, Independence Day weekend for the county. But DOT says they're geared up, gassed up, ready to go, and expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. Back to you. Now, this is one of the busiest times for the Outer Banks, especially Independence Day weekend. Just to give you an idea, the average population for Dare County is about 30,000. Well, officials say right now they're at about 300,000 of people who have just come to the beach to enjoy their weekend. But DOT says they are geared up, gassed up, ready to go. They're expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. We're and Dare County, jumping on. Now just to give you an idea of how many people are out here, the average population for Dare County is about 30,000. Well, right now, they say there's about 300,000 people who have come out here for Independence Day weekend. But DOT says they're gassed up, geared up, ready to go. They're expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. We're in Dare County. Jonathan Rodriguez, WNCN News.
Well, I promise. How long have you been doing this? About 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. So what, were the, what was it like out there today? Dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Come fill this out. All right. Going out to So what are you expecting for the next two days? Well, I expect we'll go fishing for the next couple of days. We're, we're going we're gonna to be blowed out for the next couple of days. Yeah. yeah. You're going to pack it up. Are you having to move yep. this boat out of the inlet here? Well, they haven't told us to, but we're going to, yeah, as soon as we... As soon as we get things squared up here with the folks, we're going to move it move it to a hurricane hole. Yeah. Even yeah. with just like a Category 1, is it just one of those things that you just never risk? Yeah. You... The ocean is right across the road there. It's pretty close. <laughs> Have you been through a storm? Oh, uh, lots of them. Lots of them? So is this something you're just kind of used to by now? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's just all part of, all part of living here. How do you feel about the timing? About the what? Timing, 4th of July weekend. Well, that's, I'm sorry for the people down here on vacation. You know, that's hard on them. But what are you going to do? Does it hurt business having to close up for two days? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sorry about that. There ain't much to tell. We can't run but one trip a day. And if the weather blows us out, why? That's, that's the money we don't get. How big is this definitely your most busy season? Yes. How yeah. would you compare it to around the rest of the year? Well, June, July, and August are the busiest months of the year for us. So that's the bulk of our business. Probably 80% of our business is done in June, July, and August. So that, anything that hurts us this time of year by digs deep. All right, well, can I get your first and last name? Uh, Paul Lester. Paul Lester, P A U L. Yeah. That's it. Captain Lester. All right, thank you, Captain Lester. Who's front wing? And oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you guys want to do it together, or can we do it se separate? Uh, yeah. Fine, either way. Let's just. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask you questions. That'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. first of all, if I can get your first and last name. Uh, Mackenzie Landborn. All right. Can you spell it for me? M A C K E N Z I E L A N T H O R N. Okay. Raven O'Connor, R A V E N O C O N N O R. Gotcha. Where are you guys from? Uh, Suffolk, Virginia. Virginia, okay. So are you down here for the whole week? Or? Yep, yeah. down here for 4th of July week. Oh, gotcha. So how did you feel about when you heard about a uh, possible hurricane moving through? Um, it's kind of scary, I guess, especially fishing today. But I think it brought some of the fish up this way, so it kind of worked out in our benefit, I guess. Yeah, you, you got a pretty good haul, looks like. Yeah, I got a good fish. <laughs> so for the rest of the week, what, what are your plans for the rest of the week? Are you guys going to be leaving, or are you just going to wait it out? Um, we're going to wait it out until they make us leave, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You're not worried about having a pack up vacation early. Right? No. No, not really. How about uh, any Fourth of July like uh, fireworks plan? Uh, yeah, probably. We always do fireworks most of the time. So. Yeah. Cool. How do you feel about the timing of this whole storm? It kind of sucks, I guess, because we're only down here for a week, and it kind of hit at a bad time. But I mean, other than that, hopefully we got the fish. We're yeah, good. we're good. That's what we're looking right forward to. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. That's all I needed. Perfect. All right. Yeah, check. Uh, hold on. Hold the hose. Dude, check one, two, yeah. As long as you don't turn that on. <laughs> yeah, right. Then. Oh, all right, so man. can I get your first and last name? Hey, it's Dick Harris. All right, can you spell it for me so I get it right? D-I-C-K-H-A-R-R-I-S. Perfect. What's the name of your company? Fantastic Sport Fishing. Yeah, how's it been today? Great fishing today out of Oregon Inlet, as it is almost every day. So how do you feel about uh, Hurricane Arthur? Arthur? I think it's going to pass offshore and we're not going to get a lot out of it. But it, the rain seems to have started already. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll pass offshore off this part. I feel sorry for down around Ocracoke. They may get the brunt of it, but I feel like looking at the forecast, the, the winds being on the off, best of the winds are on the offshore side that maybe we'll dodge the bullet here and only get 40 or 50 mile an hour winds. Okay, so, so that you be, on moving your boat out? I am going to move it. I think the park service is going to require us to move, so if, I am going to move in the morning. If I can squeeze the day in tomorrow to fish, if not, I'll move it in the morning. So we're going to be headed out. Uh, I'm going to try to fish if the weather's acceptable in the morning, then move it tomorrow night, afternoon. But it's going to be touch and go. 
<laughs> what does this do for business, unfortunately? Huh. Every day you lose, you don't get back. You know, ours is a, we're very dependent on the weather being good enough to go fishing every day, and hopefully we'll only miss uh, Friday and Saturday. But every day you miss, you don't get back. That's just two days that you don't get got back, and not a lot of people can, you know, they're here on vacation, they don't come back again. So we'll be next year before we get those people back. So we're hoping, hoping that it's only a two-day event. How do you feel about the timing of it? For Independence Day weekend? Oh, like what? how could you get it any worse? How, I mean, somebody planned this that, that did it. it but look at all the attention it's bringing our area. We're, we're letting, they're letting us know about it. <laughs> So hopefully, uh, like I said, we'll, it'll be out of here. It looks like it's going to be moving pretty fast by the time it gets here, and uh, maybe we won't miss but the two days. So. Awesome. That's all we need. Right. Thank you very much. Good Yep. Check one, two, check, 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 three, two, one. They're gassed up and ready to roll. The DOT has brought in the big toys just in case Arthur's rain and wind buries any roads and sand. They've set up shop with an entire fleet just south of the Bonner Bridge, and the county says they're prepped and ready as well. But the tropical storm hasn't rained on anybody's but the tropical storm hasn't rained on anybody's parade yet. The Coast Guard has been prepping their boats, making sure they're ready to launch at any minute's notice, with the tropical storm warning flags flying fast. But as for the fishing boats, it's a scramble to get in as many customers as they can. But for most people on vacation, they for most people on vacation, they say they're They'll play it by ear. They're playing it by ear. For most people on vacation, they say they're playing it by ear. But as for the 4th of July.
are gassed up and ready to roll. The DOT has brought in the big toys just in case Arthur's rain and wind buries any roads and sand. They've set up shop with an entire fleet just south of the Bonner Bridge, and the county says they're prepped and ready as well. We've got all of our staff up. We've moved all of our people around. We've got our EMS crews ready, our public works crews ready. But the tropical storm hasn't rained on anybody's parade yet. Today has been nice. It was raining this morning, so we were kind of worried about coming to the beach, but it's been beautiful here. It's been nice ever since beautiful day. Any idea that a tropical storm would be coming? No, definitely place? not. The Coast Guard has been prepping their boats, making sure they're ready to launch at any minute's notice with the tropical storm warning flags flying fast. It's all part of all part of living here. Yeah, there you go. But as for the fishing boats, it's a scramble to get in as many customers as they can. One trip a day and if the weather blows us out, why that's that's the money we don't get. Hopefully it'll pass offshore off this part. I feel sorry for down around Ocracoke. They may get the brunt of it, but I feel like looking at the forecast, the, the winds being on the off, best of the winds are on the offshore side that maybe we'll dodge the bullet here and only get 40 or 50 mile an hour winds. For most people on vacation, they say they're playing it by ear. It kind of sucks, I guess, because we're only down here for a week and it kind of hit in a bad time. But I mean, other than that, Hopefully we got the fish. We're yeah, good. we're good. But as for the 4th of July, I don't think there's going to be any firework shows this year. Plenty of people taking advantage of this wonderful weather today. By the weather today, super hot, light breeze. You would have no idea that Arthur is making its way to our coast, but now you can start to feel the winds pick up. And they say you can never be too careful, right? So the Coast Guard all the way to the DOT have been making preps to make sure they're ready to go. Now just to give you an idea of how many people are coming out here, the average population for Dare County is about 30,000. Well, they say at this point there's about 300,000 people out here. And for most of the people we talked with, they say they're just going to stick it out and try to wait through. They are taking this seriously, keeping a close eye. We will continue to monitor what's happening out here on the Outer Banks and keep you up to date right here and on WNCN.com. Guys, back to you.
Okay. And you can just talk with me, pretend he's not even back. Cool. There. Check one, two, check one, two. Let's go. All right, so if you can say and spell your first last name. Don Ray, D-O-N-R-H-E-A. Right. Jack Ray, J-A-C-K-R-H-E-A. Our meteorologist name is Bill Ray. So. Ah, there you <laughs> go. All right, okay. so uh, tell me what you guys are doing down here. Yeah, we're down for the week. Doing a bit of uh, surfing, the kids have, doing some kayaking, trying to get a little fishing in and stuff, and just enjoying the weather. It's been beautiful. Oh, yeah, how was the weather been today? The weather was great. You know, the surf, it was doing really well. The wind's been a pain, but, you know, other than that, it's just been great. Yeah. So, were you guys down for 4th of July? Yes, we are down for the whole week. So, what are your plans for the next couple of days? Stay right out here and have some fun. What are you hoping to What are you expecting, and what are you hoping to do? I'm probably expecting a little wind tomorrow evening from what we hear, maybe some rain and such, but, uh, you know, we're just going to take it as it comes. Hope we don't get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, no, there you go. Yeah, no evacuation. So, so big surfers? Big surfing? Yeah, yeah I one. like surfing. I usually come down here and that's what I do all week, so it's really fun. Oh, cool. So does this, the storms always add a little more excitement? Bringing up oh, yeah. Right before storm, storms and stuff like that, the waves get really big, so you go out there and make sure you don't get sucked out by a ripper. <laughs> you ride the waves. You ride the waves. How do you guys feel about the overall timing of the storm? Sucks. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, it's bad timing. It, it's not good for next yet. I guess a lot of people. I know the beach cleared out early today for some reason. I don't know why. We just had one little rainstorm come through, and everybody, everybody took off. So I don't know. You know, we're hoping. But, you know, it's not going to be too bad. All right, Quizzy, then. Do you know the name of the storm? No, not yet. You had to guess. What do you think it is? Oh, I heard this on the news the other day. Uh oh. Is it the Ivan? No. What? Really, so the name. I, I, I have no clue. <laughs> Arthur. Arthur, yeah. There we go. Arthur. There we go. Arthur. Arthur. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate You're your welcome. time. Thank you. Okay. No pressure. Check one, two. Check one, two. All right. So can I get your first and last name? Senior. Senior. Are you going to be spelled for me so I get it right? Friday morning, right? right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. as soon as we're going to do it. Yeah. All right, so first of all, if you can say and spell your first and last name for me. Peyton Embry, P-O-N-D-M-B-R-E-Y. Perfect, where are you from, Mr. Embry? I'm from Virginia. Virginia, okay, so what brings you down here? 
Oh, we've been coming down here for 35 years. Really? Yeah, this is our vacation spot. So how do you feel about the timing of this storm? <laughs> we've never had this before, I can tell you that. We've never had it. <laughs> we come 4th of July every year. We've never had uh, to leave here because of the hurricane. <laughs> so what are your plans? We are planning to leave tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening late, to uh, get ahead of it. Uh, make sure you stay safe. Yeah, just, for safe, just to be on the safe side. We don't know what's going to happen, but uh, we're not taking any chances. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Have you been through a storm on the beach before? No, I haven't. <laughs> Well, I guess a nor'easter, oh, yeah? but not a, not a full-blown hurricane. Not one you want to find out? No, <laughs> no, I've seen enough from a distance. I, that's as close as I care to get. <laughs> so you're just going to redo some Fourth of July plans, maybe yeah. do some stuff oh, yeah. in the house or something? Yeah, we, uh, we're far enough uh, from, the, uh, from the ocean that we won't have to worry about it. <laughs> I don't think we, uh, in fact, I hope we get some rain out of it, but I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. Well, that's all we needed. Thank you very much right, for your time. Check one, two. All right, can I get your first and last name? Yeah, Bill Greatock from Raleigh, North Carolina. Awesome, so what brings you down here this week? Uh, we're meeting a bunch of family down here. We're uh, staying at Kildamba Hills for a little while, and then we're going to go down to Corolla for a week. We're renting a house, and I guess Arthur's making a present uh, uh, felt down here. How do you feel about the timing of the storm? Uh, it's probably terrible for our, uh, our vacation, but you know what? I think it's going to just graze us, and it'll pass, pass through pretty quick. So you guys have no plans of leaving? Uh, not right now, unless they make it mandatory, and then we're still going to hunker down anyway. What are you, uh, have you been in the Outer Banks during a storm before? Uh, not during a storm, no. We have not been in the Derby storm, but I've been in other, other hurricanes up in New Jersey and uh, Wildwood and uh, places up there, but not down here. Gotcha. Is this for the entire week? Are you here for the whole week? Yeah, we're here for a week and a half. We're here until uh, Saturday in Kildeva Hills, and then we're going to Corolla, so if we're around down 12. We'll, we'll see what happens with 12, if, if anything, with the storm and everything. Put a damper on into your Fourth of July plan. Uh, we'll we'll make the best of it. <laughs> we'll, we will make the best of it, no matter what. There you go. And I'm going to quiz you, even though I think you already said it. Do you know the name of the storm? Arthur. 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 Awful Arthur. Awful Arthur. <laughs> even better. <laughs> that's a plug for my friends down there. The Hashtag. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, perfect. Thank you. That's all we needed. All right, cool.
as you can see down the beach. how it's been throughout the day. We're on the beautiful beaches here in Dare County, but still plenty of people who are taking advantage of the lovely weather right now. I'll tell you, just uh, basing it off the weather today, as Wes said, it has been hot and you would have no clue that Arthur is making its way to our coast, but it's something that everyone is keeping a close eye on because we know that it is getting closer and they always say you can never be too careful, right? So everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard has been prepping just in case Arthur packs a punch. And this is the busiest time for this Outer Banks. Just to give you an idea of how many people are out here, the average population for Dare County is about 30,000. They say right now they have about 300,000 people out here. So definitely one of the busiest times. Everybody keeping a close eye on what's going on. We will be your eyes out here on the Outer Banks and keep you up to date right here and on WNCN.com. We'll send it back to you. Three, two. Well, good evening. There is a mandatory event. Oh, sorry. Three, two, one. Well, good evening. We're here in Dare County. There's been a mandatory evacuation for Hatteras Island, a voluntary for Ocracoke Island. They've got street signs up, letting people know what's going on. You can see there's plenty of traffic already starting to make their way inland. And all throughout the day, everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard have been prepping for Arthur. Tag. Three, two, one. Now, still a lot of people say since it's the 4th of July weekend and they're on vacation, they are going to try to stick this storm out. But we'll continue to keep you updated right here in the Outer Banks. We're in Dare County. Jonathan Rodriguez, WNCN News.
Well, good evening. We're here in Dare County. There's been a mandatory evacuation for Hatteras Island and voluntary for Ocracoke Island. They've got street signs up letting people know what's going on. You can see there's plenty of traffic already starting to make their way inland and all throughout the day. Everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard have been prepping for Arthur. They're gassed up and ready to roll. The DOT has brought in the big toys just in case Arthur's rain and wind buries any roads and sand. They've set up shop with an entire fleet just south of the Bonner Bridge. And the county says they're prepped and ready as well. We've got all of our staff up. We've moved all of our people around. We've got our EMS crews ready, our public works crews ready. But the tropical storm hasn't rained on anybody's parade yet. Today has been nice. It was raining this morning, so we were kind of worried about coming to the beach, but it's been beautiful here. The weather was great. You know, the surf, it was doing really well. The wind's been a pain, but, you know, other than that, it's just been great. The Coast Guard has been prepping their boats, making sure they're ready to launch at any minute's notice with the tropical storm warning flags flying fast. But as for the fishing boats, it's a scramble to get in as many customers as they can. One trip a day and if the weather blows us out, why? That's that's the money we don't get. For most people on vacation, they say they're playing it by ear. It kind of sucks, I guess, because we're only down here for a week and it kind of hit in a bad time. How do you feel about the timing of the storm? Uh, it's probably terrible for our uh, our vacation. We're probably expecting a little wind tomorrow evening from what we hear, maybe some rain and such, but uh, you know, we're just going to take it as it comes. We just hope it all turns out good. Um, we're going to stay here just to see how it's going. We are planning to leave tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening late to uh, get ahead of it. But as for the 4th of July. I don't think there's going to be any fireworks shows this year. You happen to know the name of the storm? No. <laughs> if you had a guess, what would you say it is? Um, I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> Irene? Is it Ivan? No. Do you know the name of the storm? Arthur. Arthur, are they? Arthur. Awful Arthur, even better. Now, still a lot of people say since it's the 4th of July weekend and they're on vacation, they are going to try to stick this storm out, but we'll continue to keep you updated right here in the Outer Banks. We're in Dare County. Jonathan Rodriguez, WNCN News. Good. You just got to tell me. All right, I got to get your first and last name. Johanna Petrosky. All right, can you spell it so I get it right? J-O-H-A-N-N-A-P-E-T-R-O-S-K-Y. All right, and yours? Steve Petrosky. Gotcha, perfect. And S-E-E-B? Yep. Okay, gotcha. So tell me what you guys are doing out here this week. Just out here for vacation. Yeah, how's it been so far? So far, so good. Just today it's windy, but yesterday was beautiful. Yeah. Any of you, just based on yesterday, would you have any idea that if you weren't paying attention to the news that Hurricane Arthur was coming? I have no idea. Nice. How have the conditions been today? Uh, it's just kind of windy down here, but it's just a nice day. Very. What are you guys' plans for the rest of the week? Uh, we're going to hit the beach today a lot. We brought our three-year-old down and uh, try to get as much beach time today because don't know what's going to happen tonight, and hopefully it passes, and then we'll spend uh, the Saturday there and go back on Sunday. Gotcha. So you guys are here for 4th of July, you know, weekend, uh, but no plans to, to bail out early? No, we were actually hoping that there still might be some fireworks, but it doesn't look that way. Maybe some delayed fireworks maybe on Sunday I don't know yeah, are you guys worried about the storm at all or what do you what is your outcome slightly worried not too sure if they're gonna do a, an evacuation of any kind um, so if there's a safety concern yeah but right now just try not to worry about it too much yeah, what do you hope it does uh, I just hope a little bit of rain and then it passes and we can spend as much time on the beach which is why we came down here awesome well, anything else you guys want to add not too much that's all we needed <laughs>
one. Good afternoon, I'm Jonathan Rodriguez. We're here at the beaches of Kill Devil Hills in the outer... Check one, two, three, two, one. Good afternoon, I'm Jonathan Rodriguez. We're here on the beaches of Kill Devil Hills in Dare County, the entire county under a state of emergency, and of course the entire Outer Banks under a hurricane warning as Arthur makes its way towards our coast. But you can call this the calm before the storm. The wind is picking up a little bit. You can see by this flag behind me, but a lot of people still just out enjoying the beach. But we've talked to everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard who says they are ready for this storm. We also drove inland where we heard a lot of the intercoastal flooding happens, but a lot of people there who are on vacation say they're going to try to stick this storm out. Okay. The storm has also put a damper on some 4th of July plans. The fireworks show that happens on this pier has been postponed to the 5th of July, but for the most part, people are just hoping that Arthur will continue to push to the northeast. We're in Dare County. Jonathan Rodriguez, WNCN News. I got to do one to back to you. Okay. Two. One. Arthur also putting a damper on some 4th of July plans. The fireworks show that actually happens at this pier has been postponed to the 5th of July, but for the most part, everyone is just hoping that this storm will continue to push towards the northeast. Back to you. Hey, good morning, guys. Still the calm before the storm. The wind has picked up a little bit, but still plenty of sun and plenty of people taking advantage of the beach while they still can. As Bill said, we're expecting these conditions to get worse, if not much worse, as we progress into the evening and the early morning hours of Friday. But if you take a look behind me, out in the distance is Avalon Pier. It's a real popular spot for Kill Devil Hills. That pier took quite a beating during Superstorm Sandy. It's since been repaired, but really this will be its first test of a hurricane of the year from Arthur. They're expecting it to be okay, but it's also putting a dampering on some of the 4th of July plans. The fireworks show that goes off there has been moved to the 5th of July after dark, uh, but a lot of people are keeping their eyes on the clouds as they start to move in. And we also toured inland where Dare County officials are warning people that's where the sound side flooding happens. That's where most of the damage occurs during these types of storms. The waves were already getting much more choppy, but for the most part, people said they're still going to try to stick this storm out. Well, all my life, right here in waves. So you just kind of used to this? Is this just the norm for you then? Yeah, yeah. I don't think this is going to be much to this. But, uh, of course, there's been some changes in it. But it, it, uh, I don't think it alarmed many local people. Yeah. What is, uh, how do you feel about the mandatory evacuation? Well, you know, I've heard a couple things about it going. They were going to let them go out this morning, and then they were going to let them come in till five. Now it didn't make sense, but maybe they, I must have heard wrong. But uh, it would make sense to let somebody come back in if you've just run them out. Them you out. know, a different crew. Yeah. So. I think uh, they're trying to get them all out by five. So. Yeah. Well, they've been going all day, so uh, it, it might be better because of, of uh, you know the real estate people having to close everything down, get the windows buttoned up, and all the houses closed up before the storm or high winds get here, so. What are your plans? 
Oh, I'm just going to be around the house, that's all. That's uh, no place to go. The lava be more, most of the time is worse other places. Yeah. What's, what's it been like around here today, after since they had that mandatory evacuation? It's kind of the cars rolling it's out? Just cars rolling out of there all morning long, going north. And uh, looked like all the service stations were loaded up, you know, everybody packing up with gas yesterday, the same thing. But uh, I just can't see it being that much, even though uh, they're talking now about it may even turn and go inland. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's hard to say what, but it, I don't think it can hurt us at a, a, you know, when it gets up in 150, then you, it's a different story. <laughs> a little different one. But so you're not worried about it? But 105, no, you're all right there. I mean, <laughs> gotcha. Can I no, get your I'm first and worried. last name? Uh, Carol Midget. All right, can you spell it for me? C A R R O L L Midget, M I D G E T T. Perfect. All righty. I'm a long time resident. Yeah. Thank you for See us do the yeah. sewer hose yeah. in the back. Yeah. So, uh, uh, sewer hose and two mouths. Uh, got I one dog mouth to mouth. Yeah, that's the bad part. Oof. The sewer line. She's the pretty one, so put no, it no, no, you guys can all just do it together. It's fine. It's not a big deal. All right. Now you get on TV again. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This oh, is yeah. our, yeah, yeah, we're, this is made act. for us. Yeah, they act. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, what do you want? Yeah, so first of all, if I can get your first and last name. Ron Rice. This is okay. my son, Fox. Bless and my you. lovely wife, Phyllis. Hey. Phyllis, can you spell that for me so I get it right? P-H-Y-L-L-I-S. Perfect. So you guys are the lone survivors of <laughs> Well, we debated on uh, riding it out if we were in anything but a camper. But even still, we thought about it. We've been out here in 50, 60 mile gust winds anyway. But now that they've uh, upgraded to category two, we decided it'd be best if the, you know, the family's lives are a little more important than... Uh, we decided to get the heck out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you worried about the hurricane at all? Uh, a little bit because of what Irene did. Now that my mom said that the path is, we're more directly into it instead of the edge, I am a bit worried that we're going to lose another camper, which is like a home for us. Uh, gotcha. So what have you guys been planning, or what's what's been the final preparations? Just trying to batten down the hatches, get everything in the trailer as secure as possible because it gets towed to the sound side, and then we kind of cross our fingers and hope that it makes it through. Yeah, true, because um, that's where all the flooding is a lot of yes. times, too. Yeah, it's on uh -huh. the sound side, right? Yeah, yeah last time yes. flooding was about this high in Irene. Yes, yeah. over yeah. five feet. I can see the water line high inside. Up in the closet in the fifth yeah. wheel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it kind of weird to see everybody just tracking out? Yes, it yeah. is, especially some of the, uh, the diehard locals. Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of my friends live out here, and they're going to weather it out. They, I mean, they have real residency right you know ours is a beach house on wheels so be kind of smart now uh irene ours actually floated some but uh stayed stable everyone else's campers floated up to it and we had to dig it out i had to get on the island and of course it was several weeks afterwards so black mold everywhere Ish. you could only salvage a few mementos and that was about it mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying to, the sentimental things, we're taking this trip, um, the other stuff, we're going to let Can Arthur take if he wants, and uh, uh, we have insurance. Cross your fingers and hope for the best, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Well, cool. Anything else you guys want to add? Uh, you you want to, well, there's plenty of... Uh, Adult beverages. If you'd like to ride it out, well, can we turn this camera? Yeah. Jim Cantori, come on. I, I was gonna photo bomb him, right? Because bad weather seems to follow him yeah. everywhere. Well, he just happens to know where to be. Well, cool. If, is it okay if we just get some shots in him? You guys just kind of packing up, even if New Orleans got all the attention from Katrina. Where's ours? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna Somebody just her. needs to take care of us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Fox. The wind is blowing that way. Dad, I shake it. I know you're shaking it on the map. Sorry, you on the uh, local news. Yeah. Oh wait. No. Make sure you head over to Austin Seafood. <laughs> okay. Wait, dude. I'm trying to get the corners here matched up. Yep.
Hatteras as Arthur approaches. Go, 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 go. Two. One. Is that mic on? Yeah. Check one, two, testing, testing. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, audio was off. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Test, jeez. <clears throat> three, two, one. Good afternoon, I'm Jonathan Rodriguez. We're here at Camp Hatteras. Take a look around, it's a ghost town. Of course, the island of Hatteras is under a mandatory evacuation, except for one family who is still in the process of packing up. They said they learned their lesson from Irene. They're not gonna take any chances. The locals, for the most part, so, though, say they're gonna try to stick it out. We'll continue to keep you updated right here. Um, we're not gonna keep you updated, it's a whip. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Rodriguez. We're here at Camp Hatteras. The island is under a mandatory evacuation. And take a look. It looks like a ghost town. Everyone has packed up, except for one family who's still in the process of getting all their stuff together. But they said they learned their lesson during Hurricane Irene, and they're not going to take any chances. Talking with some of the locals, they say they are going to try to stick it out during this storm. But that's the latest here in Dare County. Are we in Dare County? Okay. Three, two, one. I'm Jonathan Rodriguez. We're here at Camp Hatteras. Take a look around. It's a ghost town. There is a mandatory evacuation underway. A lot of cars heading up north, except for one family who's still in the process of packing up and getting all their stuff together. They were here for Irene and said they learned their lesson. They're not going to take any chances. Talking with some of the locals, though, they say they're going to try to stick it out during the storm, and that's the latest from the Outer Banks. Hey! <laughs> I'm Jonathan Rodriguez walking along one of the beaches here on Hatteras Island. As you can see, really not a soul in sight. The pier is empty, the beach is empty. There is a mandatory evacuation. Only the locals say they're going to try to stick this out, but as for a lot of the visitors, they have made their way out. Even over at Camp Hatteras, looked more like a ghost town. All the campers had packed up were on their way, except for one family who was still packing up. One more time. Three. Ready? Yeah. Hey. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. <clears throat> Three. Two. One. I'm Jonathan Rodriguez walking along one of the beaches here on Hatteras Island. As you can see, not a soul in sight. The pier is empty. The beach is empty. This area is under a mandatory evacuation. They let us out so they can, we can show you. Nah. Three, two, one. I'm Jonathan Rodriguez walking along one of the beaches here on Hatteras Island. As you can see, really not a soul in sight. The pier is empty, the beach is empty. This area is under a mandatory evacuation and most people have taken heed and are heading inland, except for a couple of locals who say they're gonna try to stick this out. But even over on areas like Camp Hatteras. It looked more like a ghost town. All the campers had packed up and were on their way out, except for one family who was just a little behind. Tag. Okay. And the waves are starting to pick up as Arthur makes its way to our coast, but everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard said they are ready for this storm. That's the latest from the Outer Banks. I'm Jonathan Rodriguez walking along one of the beaches here on Hatteras Island. As you can see, really 
Not a soul in sight. The pier is empty. The beach is empty. This area is under a mandatory evacuation and most people have taken heed and are heading inland, except for a couple of locals who say they're going to try to stick this out. But even over on areas like Camp Hatteras, it looked more like a ghost town. All the campers had packed up and were on their way out, except for one family who was just a little behind. Oh, we debated on uh, riding it out if we were in anything but a camper. Just trying to batten down the hatches, get everything in the trailer as secure as possible because it gets towed to the sound side and then we kind of cross our fingers and hope that it makes it through. The waves are starting to pick up as Arthur makes its way to our coast, but everybody from the DOT to the Coast Guard said they are ready for this storm. That's the latest from the Outer Banks. Say and spell your first and last name so I get it right. Gavin Mulder. <laughs> like, I don't want to be on TV. And you can just talk with me. Uh, uh, so just tell me what's been going on and what you've seen over the past uh, day. Uh, a lot of coming and going. Uh, mostly coming back from Oak Island. Yeah, it's pretty busy. Uh, yeah, that it is. What is, uh, I guess, what are people saying that they're just trying to get away before uh, Arthur comes out? What have they been saying? I'm uh, just trying to um, really just get away from it. Yeah. Is it? Um, and tell me about the schedule. It's been completely changed for this one, right? Uh, yeah, we're running a different route, but uh, I don't know which route that is right now. We're having a little bit different. Yeah. Time, so. What? Uh, how, like, how many are running, and when are they running to? Um, at this time, no, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. But several of them. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, what's your normal schedule? Uh, normal schedule is running from 15 minutes to every 45. What are you doing now? Um, I'm not sure right now. We're oh. well, as many as you can to get everybody off. Right? Yeah, pretty much. If you had to just guess, how many cars you've seen come through in the past? Um, well, all the boats been full coming back, so about 38 a boat. And then if you had to guess, like, per hour, how many boats do you get? Um, two. Basically. Okay, two per hour. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, what time are you guys uh, stopping and running tonight? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Gotcha. Perfect. Thanks, man. All right. We appreciate it. Cool this house up. Yeah. It's just great. It's so cool. So are you on vacation or do you live up here? Well, we had a house of Rodent for uh, seven years on Ocean Drive. Yeah. Right on the end of America Drive. So nice. we always come back here on vacation. Nice. So nice. we're in Utah now for now. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. This is way different. Yeah. I what love part Red of Utah? Rock. Um, we were up in Brighton for a while, but down yeah, just in the valley of the Cottonwood Heights, right there okay. at the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon. Right. My so, grandma used to live in, uh, I think it's Paraguna. Is that right? I think it's called Paraguna. It was near I mean, the Zion National Park. Yeah, right. I, I never. I'm always back here. Yeah, I yeah, never yeah. travel around the state much. I'm, uh, I'm being a dad oh, yeah. for 10 years, and it's like, shh, oh, yeah. I hate it. I hate it. Because uh, <laughs> my soul's right here. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. What's the with you real quick? Yeah, you might be uh... Now, let's do it. Is this your dog? Oh, yeah. What's her name? Lucy. Her name. Give her Lucy. Hey, she's a target, not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's just scoot away from First of all, I gotta get your first last name. Steve Rollins. All right, can you spell it for me? So I get it right. Steve, wow. S D E V yep. R O L L I N S. Grab your ISD off your back. Uh, yep. Always have my earpiece. All right, so you are one of the only cars heading two over. I guess. I'm really surprised about that. I mean, they're making us move from a perfect freaking house. So, anyhow, we're having to move because of, I don't know, might be because of Jim Cantor. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, we're heading to half overcoat. And, uh, because there's no mandatory evacuation. And so we're renting a house. We're in a perfectly safe place in Salvo. And, and uh, that was beautiful. And uh, we had a house in Rodanthe for seven years on end of America Drive. That was oceanfront and seeing every storm in the world. And, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know. You know, since I'm not a local anymore, I can't stay here. So we're going where we can go. There you go. How do you feel about the timing of this entire storm? It is what it is, you know. This just comes with living in uh, North Carolina. What are you hoping it does? It, what it, it's whatever it does, you know. It just it is what it is. Are you expecting and, uh, it to be a big washout, or do you think it's 
gonna well, it's getting a little more intense. I think it's gonna blow up a little more than what they thought. Yeah. Um, the eye wall seems to be getting more intense, so uh, um, it's, it's gonna be a pretty decent one. It's not gonna be a big one, but it's not gonna. It, it's gonna be pretty good. So I are, call it good. Yeah, no, yeah. So what are your plans? I mean, what are you gonna do? Just hang over there? Or? Yeah, we're gonna go to um, Lake Coke for a couple days until the period starts back up. And uh, if we come back here, we'll go to the beach house back in Salvo till Sunday. If not, we'll just keep going to Moorhead. I've got friends there and, and uh, hit both of them. AB and Emmaline. So I just keep them stuck. That's it. There you go. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you very much. Good idea. Shoot him coming off a boat. Wide but close. Get down low right here. Tires. Hey, Dara, you want to try to grab one of these guys? You got to be way down there. They're not going to want you to stop it here. Yeah, I know. No, Maybe I think we're good. Down there, and somebody pulls off or something. Yeah, I think we're good. And there. evacuate. Yeah, I just said with guys that guy. Playing.
at a wide angle, I'd use it. Oh. Am I in the shot? No, you'll be alright.
Hot with beaches full. Okay, I'm rolling. Three, two, one. It was the calm before the storm. The day started off hot with beaches full. Not for Kill Devil Hills, but for Hatteras Island, it was mandatory. Highway Patrol, brock, blah, blah. Highway Patrol blocked the road as cars packed up and filed out, clearing most of the island out by five. In Rodanthe, there wasn't a soul on most of the beach, although many locals say they're planning on staying. Further south down Highway 12 was Camp Hatteras, normally booming at this time, now empty. We caught up with the very last family as they packed up to leave. In Buxton, thrill seekers took advantage of. Um, in Buxton, thrill seekers took advantage of higher winds as Arthur moved in closer. And at the end of the road, the fair. <laughs> you were waiting for it. I hate you. <laughs> And at the end of the road, the ferry to Ocracoke, working overtime work. Let's see. And at the end of the road, the ferry to Ocracoke, working Ocr Ocracoke. <laughs> Running extra hours to bring people inland. The evacuation was only voluntary there, but crews filed cars. I type that in. The evacuation was only voluntary there, but cars filed out heading off the island, with only a few heading on. And while the Outer Banks braces for Arthur, they've made it clear. He's not welcome. Okay. Hold on. It was the calm before the storm. The day started off hot with beaches full. We brought our three-year-old down and uh, tried to get as much beach time today because don't know what's going to happen tonight. Slightly worried. Not too sure if they're going to do an evacuation of any kind. Not for Kill Devil Hills, but for Hatteras Island, it was mandatory. Highway Patrol blocked the road as cars packed up and filed out, clearing most of the island out by five. There's cars rolling out of there all morning long, going north. In Rodanthe, there wasn't a soul on most of the beach, although many locals say they're planning on staying. I don't think it alarmed many local people. Further south down Highway 12 was Camp Hatteras, normally booming at this time, now empty. We caught up with the very last family as they packed up to leave. Oh, we debated on uh, riding it out if we were in anything but a camper. Just trying to batten down the hatches, get everything in the trailer as secure as possible because it gets towed to the sound side and then we kind of cross our fingers and hope that it makes it through. In Buxton, thrill seekers took advantage of higher winds as Arthur moved in closer. And at the end of the road, the ferry to Ocracoke, running extra hours to bring people inland. A lot of coming and going. All the boats been full coming back, so about 38 a boat. The evacuation was only voluntary there, but cars filed out heading off the island, with only a few heading on. We're heading to ha ha Ocracoke and because uh, there's no mandatory evacuation. Since I'm not a local anymore, I can't stay here, so we're going where we can go. And while the Outer Banks braces for Arthur, they've made it clear he's not welcome. Hey, good evening, Melanie. The weather is literally changing by the minute. We started the day off. It was hot, sunny, plenty of people on the beaches, but now that has drastically changed. Take a look over. There are not a lot of people on the beaches, and the weather's just honestly just strange. There's these low, ominous clouds floating over the sand. The surf has definitely picked up. You can tell by the waves that Arthur is starting to make his uh, way into the coast. And far off in the distance, that's actually a pier that's only about a half a mile away, but you can't even see it in the distance anymore. Arthur is making his way to the Outer Banks, and this is what people have been planning for. The temperature is also dropping very quickly at winds picking up again. 
Dare County officials are urging anyone who did not heed the warning to evacuate Hatteras Island to please move inland before night falls. They said if not, you may be stuck there for up to 72 hours uh, facing things like not being able to get EMS crews to you or even shutting off water lines as they deal with the storm. They're also warning of flooding on the intercoastal areas, but we'll continue to keep you updated right here on the Outer Banks. We'll send it back to you. It was the calm before the storm. The day started off hot with beaches full. We brought our three-year-old down and uh, tried to get as much beach time today because don't know what's going to happen tonight. Slightly worried. Not too sure if they're going to do an evacuation of any kind. Not for Kill Devil Hills, but for Hatteras Island, it was mandatory. Highway Patrol blocked the road as cars packed up and filed out, clearing most of the island out by five. There's cars rolling out all morning long going north. In Rodanthe, there wasn't a soul on most of the beach, although many locals say they're planning on staying. I don't think it alarmed many local people. Further south down Highway 12 was Camp Hatteras, normally booming at this time, now empty. We caught up with the very last family as they packed up to leave. Oh, we debated on uh, riding it out if we were in anything but a camper. Just trying to batten down the hatches, get everything in the trailer as secure as possible because it gets towed to the sound side and then we kind of cross our fingers and hope that it makes it through. In Buxton, thrill seekers took advantage of higher winds as Arthur moved in closer. And at the end of the road, the ferry to Ocracoke, running extra hours to bring people inland. A lot of coming and going. All the boats been full coming back, so about 38 a boat. The evacuation was only voluntary there, but cars filed out heading off the island, with only a few heading on. We're heading to Ocracoke and because uh, there's no mandatory evacuation. Since I'm not a local anymore, I can't stay here, so we're going where we can go. And as the Outer Banks braces for Arthur, they've made it clear it's not welcome. Well, good evening, Pam. Sean, I'll tell you, the weather out here is changing by the minute on the beaches of Kill Devil Hills. We started this day off blazing hot, sun everywhere, people all over the beach. And take a look at it now. There are still some people who are going to stick this storm out and take advantage of the beach, but the temperature has just dropped drastically. It's actually almost chilly out here. And out in the distance, you can see the clouds starting to move in. The winds are picking up just by the size of the waves. You can tell that Arthur is definitely starting to show its face out here on the coast. And this is what people all along the Outer Banks have been waiting for. Now, there's still some people out in the water taking it a little risky. It is definitely not recommended by state officials. They have warned of rip currents, but you can see there's kind of this ominous cloud that's floating all above the beach. We can tell that Arthur is definitely getting closer. Uh, Highway 12 still shut down. They had the mandatory evacuation for Hatteras Island. They're still warning anybody who did not leave to please get out before the sun goes down. They may be stuck there for up to 72 hours, if not. But we'll continue to keep you updated as Arthur moves in to the Outer Banks. Guys, back to you.
on the beach road, I advise that you will see significant storm effects. First Point Middle School is being opened as a shelter. Bring your own food, blankets, medication, and water. No pets. Did all you folks catch that announcement? Please don't YouTube me. Visiting down yes. here? Okay, let me give you this one here. You, uh, are you familiar with where First Flight High School might be? No. Okay, that's where folks can evacuate to. We're asking everybody on the beach road to evacuate. Is and it we, asking or is it mandatory or is it both? It's a mandatory evacuation. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, thank you. Does that have the school on it? Yes. Okay, so I don't know if it has a map. It's, it's, yes, it I don't care about a map. I'm just saying that when you ask people if they can hear you, they can't oh, hear you it. need to tell me because most people are no, waving. I'm telling you that everybody sitting there raised their hand. I asked them what the name of the school was. Oh, really? And they couldn't hear you. Okay, so, First Flight Middle School. Okay. You want one well, of these? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Yep. Here, take two. Okay, have a good day. has changed. People on the beach road are advised that you'll see significant storm effects. First Flight Middle School is being opened as a shelter. Bring your own food, blankets, Medication, and water, no pets. Sorry. Did everybody understand where our first flight is? Thank you all. Please be safe. Thanks. I just want to get your opinion. I, I watch, well, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. What are you going to ask me first? All the tough questions. Let's well, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ashley, <laughs> come join me. She's in Washington, D.C. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it was okay. Yeah. We're staying. Yeah. You're staying. Okay, well, that's basically what we're going to ask. Yeah. You. So just tell me that story again. Okay. So where are you from and uh, what are we're, you guys doing now? We're from New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we have a cottage about four houses down, and we stayed one other hurricane before, and it was all okay, and we think we're going to be okay. We never had flooding down our street. We've had the house for um, 18 years, and it's been okay, and so we have faith gotcha. that it's, we're going to be good. And we have wine, <laughs> so that's all we need, faith a little bit wine. of faith and wine. Yeah. There you go. That's going to be safe. The, you know, the fire truck come down. That was a little it. scary. That I have to say, you know, getting this and telling us to go to a shelter potentially is a little bit scary. I said we never had water on our street before, and he said, well, you know, good luck. We've never seen the water come over. He said it is a little scared. When it got upgraded to a category two, I'm a little scared, but she just came down from Washington. My son just came down from New Jersey and we will have all our neighbors. We're gonna be okay. Can't cancel the trip yet. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> well, perfect, that's exactly what we needed. All right, That's good. it. Oh wait, I need your first and last name. I didn't get your name. Lynn Bruggeman. Okay, can you spell it for me so I get it right? B-R-U-G-G-E-M-A-N-N. We were with WNCN out of Raleigh in the NBC station there. So you probably actually want to see us. Oh, and, they have a ha and, and they have a house in Madhead, so they yes. texted me and Facebook.
I was like, that's pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah, they get clever with that. It was, you know, it was right before Labor Day weekend when we wrote out the last one. So, of course, you know, it's the end of the season. Yeah. Businesses have the last swing to make money. And he's on his tube telling everybody that, you know, we're going to be obliterated. Yeah. And what was kind of sad was, because it was a storm, but it was out there. And it was, tra the trajectory was out 200 miles that way. Yeah. So we were on these outer bands. Yeah. And, yeah, we got a lot of rain and some... Three, two, one. And as the Outer Banks braces for Arthur, is it braces? Sorry. Braces for Arthur, they've made it clear. <coughs> okay, three, two, one. And as the Outer Banks braces for Arthur, they've made it clear it's not welcome. That's where folks can evacuate to. We're asking everybody on the beach road to evacuate. Significant storm effect. First flight middle school is being opened as a shelter. Bring your own food. Blankets, medication, and water. No pets. Did all you folks catch that announcement? Please don't YouTube me. Please be safe. Did all of you, can I see some hands waved? Did everybody hear this announcement? Please be safe, folks. Thank you. And you're asking these people to evacuate. And Kill Devil Hills to give you an update on what we're seeing weather wise. We just literally just now started to getting some of our first rain. We had about a two minute spell uh, about 30 minutes ago, but now we are starting to get a little bit more rain. The temperatures are certainly dropping and dropping very quickly. It's getting a little chilly out here. You can see by some of the COs here, the breezes are starting to pick up. And I don't know if you can hear behind me, but the ocean swells are also starting to grow. All signs that Hurricane Arthur is getting closer and closer to our location. Now, ever since it was upgraded to a category two, a lot of people who decided to to stay are keeping a close eye on what to expect for the evening into the early morning hours. We know we're going to get a lot of wind. We know we're going to get a lot of rain, but Dare County officials are also warning of a lot of flooding, not only from here, from the ocean, from overwash, but also in the inland areas, the sound areas. That's where usually they have the most problems during these type of hurricane storms. In fact, just about two hours ago, we had fire trucks driving down the beach road here, asking people who are staying along the beach to go ahead and evacuate. They don't want to take any chances as the storm continues to push in. They have set up two shelters, one at the Dare County Center and one at the First Flight Middle School that will be open throughout the evening. But again, we're starting to get a little bit of rain uh, and some wind as it continues to inch closer and closer and we are all awaiting the arrival of Hurricane Arthur. We'll continue to keep you updated right here from the Outer Banks. Guys, back to you. And the Kill Devil Hills, the weather's really kind of changing by the minute at this point. Still dropping in temperatures, still a lot of breeze starting to build up. But the rain that we just saw about 15 minutes ago has already cleared out. It's coming kind of in shifts in and out. But you can still hear the waves continuing to grow as Arthur inches closer and closer to our area. We know that we're expecting these conditions to just worsen as we move into the late evening and early morning hours of tomorrow. So Dare County is staying ahead of this. They have EMS crews ready to go. They have DOT crews ready to go. But they're warning everybody about flooding, especially right here along the coast. They said we're expecting a lot of overwash. So in fact, they've asked a lot of the people who were staying or living right along the beach road to go ahead and evacuate. They have set up two shelters. One is at the Dare County Center, the other at First Flight Middle School that will stay open throughout the evening. Also an update on Hatteras Island. Remember that was that mandatory evacuation, but they say for the people who chose to stay, they need to go ahead and be ready to possibly be stranded, if you will, over there for up to 72 hours. They say some of the things they may face is not being able to get EMS crews over the bridge. Sometimes they have to shut off water so they prevent any leaks. So those are the conditions they may have to deal with uh, choosing to stay over on Hatteras Island. But the conditions are continuing to grow and grow out here. Again, Arthur making its way closer and closer to our area. During the brunt of the storm, we are going to be right here so we can show you exactly what's going on as it hits the outer coast. But for now, we'll send it back to you.
We are still feeling a lot of the fury from Hurricane Arthur. It started about 1.15, 2.15 is when it really started to pick up and could just continued until about 4. We're still getting pelted with rain out here. A lot of wind gusts. I went uh, check out the swells at the beach and you couldn't even walk on the beach. The sand was just hitting your face so hard. Still very gusty out here. We haven't heard of a lot of damage at this point, but as I was looking out across the parking lot, I did see some shingles that were blowing off from the hotel across the way. So they are expecting there to be unfortunately some damage just from what we've seen from our location. Now, Dare County is warning people about flooding, especially on the sound side and on the coastal sides here. In fact, they've restricted access to the county until the end of the day when they can actually get some time to assess what's going on. Uh, even just here, I picked up a piece of a shingle that came from our hotel, so we are still getting plenty of winds out here. I wish I had a number to measure what kind of mile an hour winds we're having, but all I can tell you is it's a lot, but we'll continue to keep you posted out here from the Outer Banks. Yeah, I got you. It's letting up, but not quite. We're still getting plenty of rain out here, plenty of wind. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here of just the storm surge that we've seen as this storm has continued to move through. About 45 minutes ago, uh, give or take, we felt the eye move over our area. It was a nice break in this wind, and then all of a sudden it picked back up and just seemed to change direction, but we are still getting plenty of wind. I actually tried to walk out there on the beach to see what it was like, and it's almost just unwalkable. The wind is so strong, it's blowing sand all in your face. Not a comfortable situation and not one you want to be in. So if you're still in this area, it's definitely want to still stay inside at this point. Now, Deer County officials still warning about flooding, both on the sound side and on the ocean side. Last night, they asked people staying along the ocean side to go ahead and evacuate the area. They didn't know how much storm surge we were going to see. We haven't seen it break the dunes too much at this point from where we're standing, but we have seen plenty of wind damage at this part. I made it around around our hotel where we're staying. I saw a couple of sides bent over. Some of the siding from the hotel across the street was also blowing off. The storm came in about 1.15, really intensified all the way up until about 4 a.m., and now it seems like we're still getting the outer bands of Arthur. In fact, look, this is a piece of shingle uh, roofing from our hotel as we are standing outside. This uh, made its way towards us, so still very heavy winds. Adair County says they are going to assess the damage. They've actually restricted access to our county, or to Dare County, until they can figure out any storm damage. But we'll continue to keep you posted right here from the Outer Banks. Arthur was letting up out here on the Outer Banks, but not quite yet. We're on the beaches here in Kill Devil Hill, still getting pelted with plenty of rain and heavy, heavy wind gusts. The storm came in about 1 to 2.15 and has just been growing ever since. As the eye passed over, we had a nice little break, but it's just continuing to blow. This wind is just continuing to blow and blow. Take a look over my shoulder here. You can see just the storm surge that we've been seeing. The waves crashing, the uh, air wind blowing those waves caps has just been pretty intense. I tried to take a walk over there on the beach a little bit earlier and it's just impassable. The sand was blowing so hard in our faces. Uh, but taking a look around our hotel just throughout the area, we have already seen some damage from the wind. At the hotel across the street, there was actually some siding that happened to blow off this morning and then we've seen a couple street signs down. Definitely not a time to be on the roads at this time so you're not in the way of any EMS crews who need to make their way out. But we'll continue to keep you updated out here from the Outer Banks. Guys, back to you.
traffic than us. The weather finally starting to let up a little bit. It's changing by the minute. The clouds are moving incredibly fast. Still a little bit of rain uh, and a ton of wind gusts at this point. Take a look over my shoulder just so you can see how big the storm surge is from this storm right now. The waves are just incredible to see. Not a place you want to be at this point, especially for rip currents. And plus, I tried to walk on the beach a little bit a while ago, and it was basically impassable. What you can't really see is all the sand that is being blown up by the wind. It just hits your face and not a good condition. But out throughout the neighborhood, we kind of took a walk around our hotel, and it looks like there has been a lot of rain. It came in about uh, 1 to 4 a.m. That's when it was at its strongest. And at the hotel across the street, I actually saw siding blowing off uh, the shingles. And then also from our hotel, I want to show you this. As we're making our way through the class, uh, parking lot, this blew right at us. This is part of a roofing from our hotel. So they're still going to have to assess the damage out here. In fact, Deer County has restricted access to the county until they can go out and make an assessment. But things finally starting to let up out here as Arthur passes over Kill Devil Hills. That's the latest. We'll send it back to you. actually starting to let up a little bit finally I'm very glad to say we still have some pretty heavy wind gusts but the rain has let up but just so you can see how windy it is take a look over here at the storm surge just massive waves still being generated from Arthur you can see them crashing and then over to our north is the Avalon Pier it's a very popular hot spot here in Kill Devil Hills and that is just getting swallowed up by waves as well. This is kind of the story that we've seen now that we're finally getting some daylight out here. Uh, the clouds are moving very quickly, but a lot of the rain has moved out. And so now Deer County officials say they are ready to assess the damage. In fact, as of right now, they have restricted access to Deer County until they can make their rounds and see what kind of damage is out here. But at this point, still dangerous conditions out here, especially along the ocean with rip currents. We tried to walk along the beach there and the sand was just blowing all in our face. It's very dangerous to walk out there. So that's basically what we've seen as Arthur is continuing to push its way northeast. She said they lost us. Okay. I think I think it's the satellite just coming off the bird. It's the wind. It's catching that dish. Check one two. Check one two. Right, right. Get your first and last name. I'm Josh Kinavich. Yeah, where are you from? I'm from Bristol, Connecticut. Gotcha. What are you doing out there? Um, we're just gonna see how bad it was. Is it out there? Uh, it's pretty bad. The water's pretty rough. The sand's coming up pretty hard. We heard it uh, in the middle of the night. It's pelting on the window, so. And it just woke us up again, so we thought we'd check it out. Been through anything like this before? Uh, I've never been through anything like this before. Uh, Describe last night as if the storm was really coming through. Um, well, it kept us up. We couldn't really sleep. The water was uh, kept pelting on the windows. The water went all the way up. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I hope everyone stays safe. Well, good morning. We're here on the beaches of Kill Devil Hills. Hurricane Arthur making its way out, but still plenty of wind gusts out here. In fact, the beach is almost impassable. I don't know if you can see through the camera, but the sand is just dancing across the beach. And take a look at the waves, the massive surge that Arthur has brought in. Still continuously very dangerous situation out there from the rip currents and still a lot of heavy winds out this way. As we were staying in our hotel, we saw some siding blowing off of the hotel across from us. In fact, part of the roof from our hotel came at us. So as the storm continues to move out, a lot of the rain has cleared out, but it looks like wind will be a problem as these bands continue to loop around the Outer Banks. But we'll continue to keep you updated right here from Kill Devil Hill. Back to you. Okay. 
Well, as the storm passed through, these were the conditions early this morning. A lot, I don't know, three, two, one. Three, uh, three, two. Well, as Hurricane Arthur made its way off the coast of the Outer Banks, these were the conditions during the morning. The rain had let up a little bit, but the big story was the heavy, heavy wind gusts that were pounding the beach, making it basically impossible. Take a look down the way here. You can see the sand just dancing across the beach. And look at the storm surge, the massive size of these waves that are being generated by Arthur as it continued to move northwest. Well, as Arthur started making... Three, two, one. As Hurricane Arthur started making its way off the coast of the Outer Banks, these were the conditions this morning. Still a lot of rain and heavy, heavy wind gusts. The beach is almost impassable at this point. Take a look down. You can see the sand just dancing across the beach. And take a look at the waves. Massive storm surge that was generated by this storm. I wish I could say Hurricane Arthur was letting up on Kill Devil Hills, but it is back. Weather changing by the minute. The rain is back and the wind gusts picking back up again. Take a look over my shoulder. Now that we're getting some daylight, you can really see the massive storm surge that Arthur is still bringing in. Huge crashing waves. In fact, if you look north, Avalon Pier is above us. It's a very popular hot spot here in Kill Devil Hills, and it is just getting swallowed up by waves. Uh, Dare County officials still have a flood warning throughout the area, warning people to be careful, especially sound side. That's where we usually have problems when hurricanes pass through. But the beach is still impassable at this point. It's kind of hard to see, but the sand is just being blown everywhere. So we couldn't even take a walk down there to show you that area. But as we were making our way around the hotel to kind of see if we could see any damage, there was a, a little bit from what we could see. There were some street signs blown over. Some of the siding from the hotel next to us uh, was blown off early this morning as the storm came in about 1 a.m. Really intensified around 4. We felt the eye pass over because it was that nice calm and then back at it again. It looks like we're dealing with the outer bands of this storm now. So we'll continue to keep you updated right here from the Outer Banks as Arthur continues to push east. I wish we could tell you that Hurricane Arthur was letting up here on the uh, Outer Banks, but not quite. We're still taking a beating. The rain has let up a little bit, but still heavy, heavy gusting winds, especially as we get more daylight. Take a look out. You can see just the massive storm surge and the big, big waves, especially as they crest and the wind blows the water off the top. You can really see Arthur still generating a lot of force out here on the Outer Banks. Uh, also, Dare County residents warning of flooding, not only along the coast, but also on the sound side. That's usually where they have a lot of the problems from water being uh, pulled in, especially as we reach the outer bands of this hurricane. And they have so far restricted access to the county until they get a chance to really assess if there's been any damage. An example of that damage is this right here. This is our roof, part of our roof from the hotel we're staying at. As we were making our way outside, it made its way towards us. Uh, also at the hotel across the street, we happen to see some siding get blown off. So I'm sure there will be some wind damage that needs to be assessed out here. But right now, still just waiting for this storm to push off of the Outer Banks. We'll send it back to you guys. Three, two, Well, good morning from Kill Devil Hills. Hurricane Arthur still not letting up quite yet. We have a little bit of rain, but still heavy wind gusts as we're getting more and more daylight. Take a look over my shoulder here, just so you can see how windy it is. Take a look at the storm surge and the massive waves that we've been seeing, especially as the wind continues to blow over the waves. You can see that water just blow over the crest there. Dare County still warning about uh, flood warnings throughout the coastal areas and the inland areas. In fact, they have issued, hold on, hold on, hold on, read it. Something keeps popping in my IFB and I hear from voice. Pull it out. I think that was Patrick's time cues, but I didn't hear you, Patrick. I just heard me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well good morning, Kurt. Three, two, one. 
Well, good morning, Hurricane Arthur. Still not letting up here at Kill Devil Hills quite yet or along the Outer Banks. The rain has lightened up a little bit, but still some pretty heavy wind gusts now that we're getting more daylight. Take a look over my shoulder just so you can see how windy it is out here. Some pretty massive storm surge. Look at those waves, especially as they begin to crest and you see the water just blow over the top of those waves here. But Dare County officials are warning people of flooding in the area. In fact, they've restricted access to the county until they get a chance to really go survey the area. But that's the latest from here in Kill Devil Hills. We'll continue to keep you updated more after the break. That was like 34, 35. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. They can make it work. Okay. It's hard to get right at 30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Massive storm surge. Look at the size of these waves being generated by the storm, especially as they begin to crest and you see the water just come off the top of there from the wind. Two. Good morning, Hurricane Arthur. Still not letting up here at Kill Devil Hills. The rain's tapered off a little bit, but still heavy, heavy wind guts, especially along the coast here. Take a look over my shoulder. You can see the massive storm surge. Just look at those waves still being generated. A lot of force out here from Hurricane Arthur. Dare County officials still warning about flooding both here along the coast and in the inner areas, especially on the sound side. That's where they have a lot of problems during hurricanes like this. In fact, the entire county is under restricted access until they get a chance to really survey the area and see if any damage has been done and if travel is safe. But we'll continue to keep you updated as Arthur pushes its way off of our coast. We'll have more after the break. Uh, I wasn't timing you, I'm sorry. That's fine, that was about. Uh, it's this. Hang on, hang on, let me count it down. Okay. Three. Well, good morning, Hurricane Arthur. Still not letting up here in Kill Devil Hills. The rain has tapered off a little bit, but still heavy, heavy wind gusts. In fact, take a look over my shoulder. Now that we're getting some more daylight, look at the massive storm surge that force from Hurricane Arthur still generating some pretty gnarly waves out here. Now, Dare County is warning residents of flooding here on the coast and also on the sound side. In fact, the entire county is under restricted access until they can uh, make sure everything's safe. But we'll have more coming up after the break. Okay, we'll check one, two. All right, so first of all, can I get your first and last name? Terry Moorfield. Gotcha. Okay, so you're here on vacation? No, actually, we came down for the July 4th weekend with my in-laws. Gotcha. How do you feel about the timing of the storm? I love it. Yeah? Yes. I've been wanting to be down here for a hurricane since we bought the cottage five years ago. Um, the last one that was hitting close, I had to work, so I couldn't be down here. So this has been interesting. Describe what it was like last night or early this morning. Uh, windy, pounding rain on the cottage. You could see sheets of wind going along the street. Gotcha. And then the lightning uh, yeah. towards the beach area. How about conditions now? Have you ever seen the beach like this? Y yes, I've seen it this rough. So, but it's still a nice dark gray, slate gray. Now that Arthur's moving its way out, what are what are your next plans? Are you glad he's he's gone? I'm glad he's gone. We can finish the weekend, and all those that are down for the July 4th holiday can have their celebrations. And hopefully, it's going out to sea and not affecting anybody north. Perfect. Thank you. So, very what much. do you uh, like about the uh, yeah, about hurricane? Yeah, I don't know. Just the power of them. Watching the what. The rain, and as it comes down in horizontal sheets, um, the damage it can do. So, I mean, it's Mother Nature at her best. So, there we go. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. One. Oh, let me count it down. Well, I'm not going to time this one. I'm just oh, going to okay. just, just for a few. Right. 
Good morning, Hurricane Arthur still not letting up here in Kill Devil Hills. The rain's tapered off a little bit, but still some pretty heavy wind gusts. Now that we're getting some more daylight, take a look over my shoulder at the massive storm surge. Just look at the size of those waves. A lot of force still being generated by Hurricane Arthur. Now, Dare County officials are warning people in the area of flooding both along the coast and on the sound side. In fact, the entire county is under restricted access until they can get through and see if it's safe to travel. We'll continue to keep you updated from here in the Outer Banks as Arthur continues to push off of our coast. Good morning, Hurricane Arthur still not letting up here at Kill Devil Hills. The rain has tapered off, but still heavy, heavy wind gusts, especially here along the beach. Take a look over my shoulder. You can see the sand just dancing across the beach here. And look at the massive storm surge that this storm is generating. Just huge, huge waves, a lot of force behind Hurricane Arthur. Uh, Dare County officials are still warning residents of flooding throughout the area, both along the coast and inland. In fact, the entire county is under restricted access until they can get through and determine if it's safe to pass through. We'll continue to keep you updated from right here in the Outer Banks. One more, go. Three, two, one. Well, Hurricane Arthur still not letting up here. I kill Devil Hill. There's wind. Has one, three, two, three, two, one. Well, Hurricane Arthur is still not letting up here in Kill Devil Hills. The rain has tapered off, but as you can see, still getting hammered by wind, especially here along the coast. Take a look over my shoulder. I'm going to stand with my back to the wind. You can see the sand just dancing across the beach. And look at the storm surge. Still massive force being generated by this hurricane. Some pretty big waves. Now, Deer County officials are warning residents of flooding both on the coast and on the sound side. In fact, the entire county is under restricted access until they can determine if it's safe to pass through. We'll continue to keep you updated right here from the Outer Banks.
get B roll there with the flag, wasn't it? <laughs> Sing the mic. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Well, good morning. We're here on Collington Road in Adair County. Hurricane Arthur finally making its way off the coast, but take a look at where I'm standing. I'm in the middle of a road. The sound complete this area, and this is usually the problem spots after a hurricane. Sound side flooding. It has just completely taken over this road. In fact, you can't see it, but there are actually little fish me in the road here. They say it's going to be wind. It will determine how quickly this clears out, but we'll continue to keep you updated right here in Dare County. Go again. Come forward. Go again. Come up there. Three, two. Come here. Come closer. Yeah. Right here. Check three, two, one. Can you hear me? Three, two, one. Well, good morning, Hurricane Arthur. It's finally pushing its way off the Outer Banks, but here in Dare County, flooding is now a big issue. I am standing in the middle of Collington Street, blocked off of Soundside flooding. There is about a good foot of water here. In fact, you can't see it, but there are. What? Let's go. Do it. So what? Then go. Okay. Carolina hurricane has made its way. Nah, 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 nah. One of the biggest issues after the storm is sound side flooding. I'm actually standing in the middle of Collington Street. It's been blocked off. You can't see it, but there's even little fish swimming throughout here. The sound has completely taken over this road. Some cars are trying to make their way through if they got enough clearance, but this is the type of sound flooding that happens all the time in Dare County when storms move through. Go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one. One, of the biggest, one of the biggest issues after the hurricane is sound side flooding. I'm actually standing in the middle of Collington Road, one of the busiest secondary roads here in Dare County. The sound has just pushed all the water and taken over this road. You can see behind me. Some people are still trying to brave their way through, but you can't even see, but there are tiny even little fish swimming on top of this road, waiting for this water to proceed back into the sound. One more time, one more time. Yeah. As it passes or after? Now, now. Three, two, one. One of the biggest problems after the hurricane is secondary flooding, especially on the sound side. We're standing in the middle of Collington Road. You can see cars are trying to trek through all the water that has just poured over from the sound. Even little fish are swimming across the road here. It's one of the biggest... It's okay. the biggest problems after the storm is sound side flooding. I'm actually standing in the middle of Collington Road that has just been completely taken over by water from the sound pushing all the water. You can see there's a couple of people trying to walk their way through, even a couple of vehicles who are brave enough to try to trek through all of the high water.
Susan Farr. All right, can you spell it for me so I get it right? Uh, Susan, S-U-S-A-N, F-A-R-R. -R. Two R's, got it. Okay. Yeah, let's scoot up a little bit. Oh. Let's scoot up a little bit. Okay. That's good. Yep. <laughs> Why did I say it? Because <laughs> you talked. You kind of so. did, and I just kind of threw this off. But anyway, so just tell me how today's been. Today's been great. The weather turned around 1.30, and the sun's out. It's beautiful. Glad to be here. So you guys decided not to leave when everybody else was leaving. Why is that? Yeah, because we've been here for years, and um, my family lives in and has house in Waves, and so we know that it wasn't really as bad as yeah, so you weren't worried about it? Not worried at all. How do you feel about the storm now? Well, I'm really glad it happened in the middle of the night so that we got a great day yesterday and a great day today. Gotcha. It's been in the 4th of July on the beach. You can't really be there, right? That's right. Do you think the timing was kind of bad, though, unfortunately, for the storm for a lot of people who came down for vacation? I think it probably affected a lot of people coming down. Yeah. Okay, so what's the plan for the rest of the week? So the rest of the week, we're heading off to Waves, North Carolina. Uh, staying at a beach house. We're going to be delayed for about a day because the road is apparently washed out, but hopefully we'll be able to get there on Sunday. Gotcha. Anything else you want to add? Nope. <laughs> All right. Okay, so tell me, first of all, state it out. What yeah. was the storm like last night? It really wasn't that bad. I mean, uh, it was, you know, we didn't get much rain. I think we got less than two inches of rain. And the wind, I was out here, so I, I think I heard the wind that, you know, bad at home, not sustained. Uh, just by the sound of it, I mean, I didn't have any type of uh, instrument to measure it. But uh, really, I mean, I feel sorry for the people that got, you know, some damage in that time. Uh, uh, it really wasn't that bad. I didn't really expect it worse. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people did. How do you feel about, how about you? How do you feel about just the timing of all this? Fourth of July weekend? Tons I really there. feel sad because I was telling him this is like a seasonal business, like an ice cream shop. They have to make their money Memorial Day to Labor Day, and it seems like the bread and butter is Fourth of July. And I really feel sad. Some people left, not everybody, but it did definitely hurt business. Yeah. How do you feel about the storm now? I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad it's going out to sea and it's not going to possibly do more damage to the East Coast. And how about you? What do you think? Is uh, you just because it's kind of like the uh, silver lining after the storm now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, here we are, like what, 10 hours late? Like, not even 10 hours late. Like, I mean, I'm a, an old guy, and you know, four or five hours on the beach every day is enough for me. And I got that yesterday before the storm hit. And, you know, I came down this morning and drank some coffee and just looked at the water and. Uh, really hasn't affected our vacation. I mean, I feel sorry for the people who did and maybe postponed coming down or, or, or left early and they didn't have to. But, uh, but overall, glad that it didn't do as much as yeah, a lot of people thought. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah, gotcha. Well, cool. That's all we need, I guess. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Uh, West Virginia. Check one, two. All right. All right, can I get your first time there? Uh, Dylan Pepper. Gotcha. So, were you guys, where were you at for the storm? Uh, we were in Virginia. Oh, you were, so did you guys just come down today? Yeah, we had today. Oh, okay. How'd you feel about the time you had to do it? Uh, kind of our vacation. Oh, so were you planning on coming in earlier? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. When did you guys make the call to go ahead and post it on? This week. Oh, yeah. Coming right now. So how do you feel about it now? What are your, what are the plans for the rest of the fourth of July? What do you think else you want to add? Alright, perfect. Thank you.